this is my E-Flight Erratics. It's a flat for me. And I mean, as you can see, lots of repairs on this one. So I will talk more about them, but first let's go out and fly these erratics. So I have a really strong headwind today, just blowing straight into my face. I've done a few flights prior to this flight, and um, I must be exploring this RC plane right now. Just try to get a sense for how it feels when I fly it. I have, have reduced rates on mine, so it's around 70% for all control surfaces and around 40-45% expo for all the control surfaces also. And I'm flying this on a 3S 850 milliamp battery. And so far I think that you have the choice then to for a 650 milliamp battery, battery. And I think the lighter you can get this Arsenal plane, the better. So maybe 650 then it's a better choice. And it's also really difficult to fly this RC airplane uh, if you just uh, look past like how you can over control this because it's not, it's not the most stable 3D plane I've flown. I think I have a couple of others that are really super rock steady. But this is a small RC plane, so of course it's easier to over control. And I also think that even the kind of design of this RC airplane and the color is chosen, just in certain angles, it's really easy to just lose orientation so you don't know in which direction you're actually going so uh, this is something to be aware, aware of then I mean I have uh, some other RC planes in like 3D aerobatic style that are really easy to just to tell orientation because the colors and the choose of stripes and such um, just make them really visible this one can be a little bit difficult I also think that the construction of this plane could have been better and that it's, in my opinion, a little bit overpriced also. I know you get all this, like the spectrum technology and the receiver and, and uh, speed controller. But still, it's just a flat foam RC plane. So, uh, I mean, uh, certainly could have been cheaper. I think that... Uh, Horizon Hobby then market this as an indoor flyer. Then you have to have it really light. Uh, it does handle wind. Uh, certainly not uh, any worse than the similar RC planes in this size. And it's super maneuverable. You can uh, just toss this one under and round in the sky how you like. It's um, super agile even on reduced rate. And uh, I really want, don't want to go out on the ice because it's thin. So I'm doing anything advanced, just risking the SARS plane and also not staying too low because there are a lot of objects then on this jetty. As far as fun goes, I think you can have a really good time with this SARS plane. As you can see, it really turns fast. You can hover. It's un unsteady in this kind of wind, at least. I have to fight it. I'm also more used to fly my 1.3 E-Flight Extra 300. So I'm a little bit spoiled by the stability of the Extra 300 then. And I'm also kind of spoiled by the Night Timber X because it's just a super agile and fun large airplane to toss around. And just because it's a large large airplane I never lose orientation with the Night Timber X then. But this one, I mean, in certain angles like this, you can be really difficult to tell if it's going towards you, away from you, which way you're turning in. Maybe it depends on what kind of sky you have. So 
time to get this one down, try to plop it down then just in front of me. As you can see, I mean, I think this Sarsa plane just fly really great if you can handle it. It is kind of small and it is wind sensitive and it is also to me at least a new experience. So, I mean, I'm not really a 3D pilot. I fly, you know, my kind of aerobatics, but it was really interesting to, to try this Sarsa airplane. And I have lots of repairs. I mean, I rebuilt the nose. And I have to go into a few negative things with this RC airplane. So first off, the foam hinges are so thin. I mean, uh, just for durability, I would so much would have seen that they have put in some sort of, uh, you know, plastic hinges. I've done this on this uh, side and just to, re to re uh, repair this RC airplane. But I mean, both my um, elevator, my my rudder, and also this side of the aileron then. The hinges are more or less just um, broken. So, I mean, that's a really negative thing. And I'm questioning the build on this source airplane because I also broke in one of the landing gears. It's a carbon fiber. Um, but I, I managed to flew this one into a fence and it just uh, broke. I also rebuilt the nose, which was quite easy one, once I just uh, found all the parts. So it's really ugly looking, but it uh, does fly well. So, I mean, the construction is not my favorite really. I think that these plastic um, holes then for the foam pieces, they do also break and, and come loose. So um, quality wise, not really too great. I'm also a little bit questioning about the choice of servos because for the ailerons, you do have a Metal Gear servo, but not for the elevator or for the rudder. And I had kind of a hard landing and I broke uh, or broke, I mean, the, the servo just went bust, although I didn't really crash this RC airplane for, for the rudder then. So then I replaced this with a Metal Gear servo. And in my opinion, then all RC airplanes, uh, at least in this size or larger, should have Metal Gear servos. It's, it costs nothing almost for the manufacturer, but it costs much more for me if I have want to replace the servos then with new servos. So, I mean, it's a really fun and interesting experience. As far as flying, no problem with this RC airplane. When it comes to the construction, I think that they could have done a much better job to make the, the, the durability of this RC airplane. So that's just a few opinions then about my um, E-Flight erratics.